Hey, I'm Captain Eddie Castle, and welcome to the shop. I'm playing around a little bit. Welcome to the shop. Like, I didn't know you were coming. I got the mic on, you know, all this other stuff. Hey, uh, I'm in a shop, and I'm doing a few things. I'm getting ready to start a simple little project. Now, I like playing with simple little projects right now. I'm redeveloping some skills. Hey, you can do it. You want to see how? Let's get sharp. All you have to do is... Oh, wait, I'm not supposed to do that finger thing anymore. I got to do something else. I know what it is. What? That's, that's loud. Hey, when I say getting sharp, I'm getting ready to start a new little project. That big, right? And I've, I need probably need my roughing gouge, my Ellsworth type gouge, and my skew. And if I know going in, I'm going to need those three tools, I want to sharpen up those tools before I get started. Here's the deal. Why would you go cut grass with a dull blade? Why would you shave with an old razor? Um, why would you get your hair cut? Oh, wait, for you folks who get your hair cut, you understand. All right, but sharpen up when you get started. Okay, we're going to sharpen up a little bit today. Now, I'm going over to my Porta Cable 8-inch grinder. Now, I'm going to use my Blackhawk rig to sharpen up. Uh, we'll start with a roughing gouge. It's pretty simple. Just turn the grinder on and let it get caught up to us. It takes a little while to spin up. But once it d d spins up, it's running smooth. It's in pretty good shape. I'm going to take the jig, stick it in a hole, And push the lock. Did you see that? I took the jig, I stuck it in the slide, and I pressed the lock. I didn't measure anything, I didn't check anything, I didn't go out, you know. No, that's what I did to sharpen this up. Now, another part of my sharpening is you do realize when you sharpen something, there's steel coming off that wheel. I like how that sounds steel coming off the wheel. All right, and that can go right here. Think about this safety if you can feel ever feel it hit your face it will hit your eyes so shield up and i love it when these guys that do demonstrations in clubs say well, i can't do this wearing the shield you know what it means it means they just don't wear a shield that's what it means they go high y'all in one roughing gouge this is a d-way it's in their handle it's probably the best roughing gouge i've used it's uh, it's heavy. It's got a, some great steel on it, and I don't know what the codes and all are. It's just got good steel. If I bought this at Harbor Freight, I'd grind it the same way. Not making fun of Harbor Freight now. All right, let's go to it. My jig. Now, as you see, all I'm going to do is place the handle in the socket. I'm going to take the blade. Now, I'm thinking about standing here about five or ten minutes and showing you how I'd sharpen this thing up and all this noise and, and that. But guess what, boys, girls? I'm done. This is sharp. I just made one pass over my fine CBN wheel. CBN stands for can't be nicer. I just made one pass over it. One pass. Using my jig. You want to see that again? Okay. Why would I throw more steel on the floor? I bought this. I paid for it. So I'm not going to throw it on the floor. And that's why I'm using the jig. One pass. And I am sharp. I can go over here and rough out my piece. If something goes wrong, I can come back, slip my rod in again, and make it sharp again. Now, what made it so simple? This is a little part right here. This little part right here is what made it simple. Because this is what I, I call it an accuset. Um, and remember, wood, wood turners, we can give anything, anywhere a new name. It's permissible. Um, look around. All right, put this in. It slid up to this mark. Now I'm going to pull this. I'm going to put this out, and I'm going to put this away. Now the accuset is set. It's locked in. 
This is from a roughing gouge. Now, if I was to have five or six tools that I'd want to do um, different grinds on, I'd have a reference mark on the side of this bar, uh, and I could do it with the white paint stuff and say, okay, right here is going to be my roughing gouge. Up here is going to be my bowl gouge. This is going to be one I can reach out and touch God with. You, know, the, you mark it, reference it, and then when you need it, just move the accuset to the area, and, and that's all. But yeah, I have ground most of my tools on this one setting. Yeah, let's talk about that a bit. Oh, don't go anywhere. i got to get another tool. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hey, if anybody sees a little 3 by 4 diamond card laying around it, right here, let me know. I was touching up something today. Uh, I checked my pockets and everything. It's around. Maybe I'll catch it when I'm looking for this tool. Nope, no diamond card. I hate when I lose those things. Um, probably in my pocket. Now, I went and got another jig, and I went and got my Ellsworth type tool. Ellsworth type tool. It came from D-Way, and I put it in the handle. I'm just grinding with something that Davey created. All right, this is my Ellsworth type jig. I call it Ellsworth Aversara type jig because I can grind. Well, I'm going to show you. Well, simple thing. Got the jig. Accuset is set. Okay, because I measured all this before, and i tell you how you do that. I'm going to go over and slip it right into the, the slide. Pull the handle up. That's locked in. That is it. I don't have to get a guide out of the chart. I don't have to get one of those fancy-looking crows and all that stuff to measure. This is done. Accuset keeps it in place. Here's my, t my tool holder. Now, I have to put my tool holder on my tool. Yeah, right. That's why it's a cool tool holder. Okay. I'm going to set it for two inches. That's my little set point, two inches. You can have a block on the table, stick it in the ear, whatever you want. But you want that thing to be square across and the knob to be snug. So I'm going to go get a wrench. But all you have to do is get this to where... This little part right here is two inches out. Wait. Hold on, hold on. I said that too quick. My preferred grind, it's a 247. Wait, 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 wait. Take nine, whatever. All right, I screwed this up. <laughs> I can tell you where you can get David Ellsworth's sheet, and you'll understand this a little bit better. This two is out of the, the, the jig, two inches out from the face of the jig. All right. The four is from the center of this axle down to this pocket on the jig. Center of the axle to the pocket of the jig. Doesn't matter where the table is. Doesn't matter if you've got to put this up on a block or put this up on a block. None of that matters. What matters is the distance from the center to the pocket. That's the four. The seven is from the face of the wheel out to the pocket. That's seven. So I'm two, four, seven. And I got a nice little jig made to do that with. I can sit up there and show you. But since I moved into the shop, the shop into the house, find that jig. It didn't wash away. It was Corey in. Now, I'm set. Two, four, seven. Everything's set up, okay? Um, and we're going we're gonna to touch this up. Now, this is in pretty good shape. But... For the spirit of this demonstration, and i got to adjust the mic, right? For the spirit of this demonstration, I'm going to say it's dull. You'll never know. All right. Back pocket. I call it the back pocket, the one out here. Up to the wheel. One pass. You wouldn't believe it. That's all the way around. That's uniform. Really. I mean, it doesn't take any more than... You're not going back and forth. You're not reshaping it. You're not changing the tip. You're not doing any of that. You're sharpening the edge. Now, that is just the Ellsworth. Now, I don't need all the heel on the back. Here, wait. Let me get up closer. 
I don't need all the the bevel behind that to make my cuts. And sometimes that gets in the way. Why? You're taking a school bus and you're trying to go around the turn at the bank. What, he got the ATMs? And they build those specially to wreck your cars. Um, you're trying to take a school bus through that. You can't turn it. Why? What's on the back end that doesn't do anything is holding up the front end, which is everything. Here's the back end that does nothing, and here's the front end that does everything. So what I need is a sharp edge. I don't need about nine miles of bevel back there, and I exaggerate, so it's only 3.45 miles. But I don't need it. I want to relieve it. So I'm going to go to this second spot. That's why I call it the Aversarian line. That relieves the bevel. Now, since I made two passes, I have to go back and make two passes again. Now, let me show you. Let me get closer one more time. I won't bite. Come on. Do you see how it's relieved? I get to whisper in a little bit. There you go. So it's relieved. I have about half of my bevel gone. That's it. About half of the bevel. Now, zoom back out. I don't need all that bevel to guide my tool. I've learned how to tool cuts, and I've learned how to control how to tool cuts. Now, if I'm a novice turner, and I've used a rookie or anything, if I'm a novice turner and I need to make some nice sweeping little cuts inside of a piece, I'm going to want to relieve it like this. Now, if I'm also a novice turner, I'm not too sure, leave it alone. Use it like it is, and when you discover you can't make those sweeps, then go back and relieve it. Oh, yeah, by the way, I said Ellsworth Eversara Grind. David Ellsworth is one of the leaders of the woodburn turning gang. Uh, I think he's got AAW card one, if that matters. But Eli Avasari is a, a, a turner from Israel, and his living is made by turning over there and over here and teaching. Eli showed me that this will help me do a barbell or really, really fine finio without tearing it up. He showed it to me one night in a demonstration at Aramont. I came back and have never used an, ever, an, uh, an Ellsworth type grind without relieving it. Never. I was done with that. I had a pro tell me it sharpens up. Okay, that's this rig. Quick, slid it in, put it to the point. It was in the spot, no adjustments. I didn't throw any steel on the floor. And my tool is ready to go. Oop, that goes here, not there. Now, we're going to talk about one more tool. Don't move. And then, by the way, did you see that diamond card? If it helps, that's about the size of the card. But it goes in a little green folder. And uh, you would think somebody would put it right back where it goes. Okay, let's go back to this. I changed tools. I went and got my skew. This is a, I don't know what brand it is. Hell, hell I made the handle. Um, I think it was made by, um, well, don't worry about it. Your skew, your skew. Mine is kind of oval shaped, got smooth corner in the bottom. I like that, I'm, I'm digressing here, because when I sweep it along the top of my tool rest, I want to do the sweeping. I don't want to be hitting bumps or digging in. And my tool rest is smooth. You can't see me. My tool rest is smooth and clean. I keep it that way so I can do that slide. But now we're talking sharpening. Sharpening. Sharpening my, get my, my skew. Let's put the... Boy, I'd really like to show you how I put it in a holder to do a skew. And you can do this side and then this side and, and all that. I'd like to show you how to do that. I don't do that. No, this is what I do, and this is my skew, my, one of my favorite tools. It's not my favorite because I don't want to hurt his feelings. It's one of the favorites. Okay, while I take this, my, I can see it's, it's, it's clean. Let me see something. 
I have an old-fashioned Mark's lot right here. And I said old-fashioned, boy, I said old-fashioned. This thing used to watch TV in the 50s. Yeah. Explain today to a kid that gun smoke was on every Saturday night. It was a great show. You didn't miss it. Because Matt Dillon was going to kill somebody. Um, or be nice to him. Okay, I've colored dash a little bit with a black a black marker. Any color you want, just color the edge. Then I take it up and I lay it way back on the bevel. And I bring it up and check it. Then I see that I erase all the black marker. Almost, but it's a field type thing. You look at it and see. I'm doing a gentle, gentle touch. I wouldn't dare bear down on this thing. Now with that, this edge is now clear. No black. Which means I rolled this the way I wanted to roll it. Flip it over. Get a hand I got a handle on where it was supposed to be. It gets in a mindset. And I've cleaned the other side. So I've got both sides ground down. Now angle the combined angle of this from the 25 degrees all right the, the numbers jigs and all if you got a jig 25 degrees if you go 28 degrees yeah you're all right if you go 30 35 degrees it's like beat on with a hammer and you go real fine yeah you won't like it 25 is about where you want to be now what if it's curved can't you do that hey you can do that yeah, so it works. I don't need a jig, just a grinder. You want to talk about that? I want to talk about that. Don't move. Still trying to find that damn card. Now, why I'm looking for the card, and I need it, I'm going to find out one of the other ones here. Uh, yeah, he isn't, the red isn't that sharp. Or that, of course. I got these from Amazon. Why? Shop around. Man, if you're looking for something, a lot of times you find the exact item on Amazon for a whole lot less money. Um, I I just see that controller behind me on my, my lake. That's a controller for a one-way. Two parts failed in that controller from being exposed to the weather during the storm a while back. I replaced both parts. I love the people at One Way. They're nice. I replaced both parts with the code number going to Amazon right there. Got them. Now, I get free shipping on Amazon because I'm a really nice guy and I got an ammo jacket and all that. Um, my wife arranges something and pay them or whatever. But I got it on Amazon next day for the same price, no shipping. So shop around a little bit. I really hate giving people a ton of money when they say shipping is nineteen ninety five. I don't pay anybody in the grocery store nineteen ninety five to put all my groceries in bags. I don't want to go too far in that. I just touched up my skew. Okay. I got my diamond card. I'm gonna go across and make some very light cuts. Now I don't get on top of the bench and do all this. Because I don't need to reshape that edge. All I'm doing is taking a burr off. When you ground it, you push a little seal over the top. And then I've... Ooh, I just lapped my razor. Oh, no I didn't. Got a look right there. Now I have it. <laughs> yeah. Now, some people say if it shaves you and all, you can cut hair with a weed eater. So that that's not true. If you feel it and there's no burr, you've raised a burr on both sides, then you pretty much got a sharp edge. Now, I can cut today. I can do all kinds of things. I use the skew to do lines and slices. I like slicing. 
and all that. Now, skew's going to get a little wear. I don't want to have to touch it up again. Do I come here? No. Steal on the floor, remember the deal? Okay. Don't need to do that. Take my skew. Oh, wow. It needs a little polishing. Still razor sharp. So that's why I'm looking for another, another card. Really, it's in one of my pockets. But that's how I touch up my skew. Now, I can also use that to touch up my fingernail grind gouge and all that. Oh, by the way, I did the 247. Remember for the Ellsworth? I like my little fingernail gouge. Uh, Mark Soleil shows how you do the slicing with it. He's real particular. I will sharpen my fingernail gouge right here on 247. No change. 247. And I get perfect grind, and then I relieve the back a whole lot because of a little fingernail. I just don't want a little, done with a little bit, bit of edge cutting, and that's what I managed to do. So, grinding. Did I say we we're going to talk about grinding? Let's hey, come on. Let's talk. Okay. I get calls every day from wood turners around the world. Yeah, I do. Um, and they ask questions about problems and situations. And I love to talk. Today, probably spent two or three hours on my phone. I hope she's got that agreement. Um, okay. But I talk about things, and a lot of times we talk about sharpening. I talked to Mike this morning for almost an hour about sharpening. And he, he's asked some pretty important questions. Now, Mike said he went and bought this wet thing that goes real slow to put the... All right, that's really nice if you're going to sharpen your wife's scissors or your lawn clippers. But we're talking about putting an absolute positively true edge on every single time without throwing that steel on the floor. So what do I grind on? I said I only got my port of cable. This is a port of cable... Uh, there's a model in here someplace, PCB575G, BG or whatever. Okay, nice, isn't it? Yeah, nice. Did that matter? Did any of that matter? Really? This is an 8-inch grinder. 8-inch grinder. They got them at the big box stores. It's got a variable speed on it. Listen to me change the variable speed. Do you hear the speed change? From high to low. You didn't catch that? Let me tell you why. It didn't change. That who diggy what I got. That changed. It's a rheostat or a potential meter. That thing got wet when it was left out there. By accident. It got wet. I had to clean the switch. But it will no longer change from high to low. It's running full bore. What, what's it say? 3,400 maximum, right? Talking to Mike, he said, if you do that, you ruin your tools. That's a story. It really is. It's a story. I turned the grinder off and it's a waste of electricity, but I want to be able to touch the wheel in a few seconds. A few seconds. I turned the grinder off. I go look at the clock. Six minutes and 13 seconds ago. And it's still spinning. All right. It's just a port of cable. It's a variable speed. Now, when it was running, turn a variable and it did move. All right. Because I'm running at 3,400 RPMs. Mike ask me why is it okay because I'm not grinding anything if I was doing my lawnmower blade I'd want a 40 or a 60 or a 60 or an 80 comes in a box with them and I'd grind here sharpen here okay but I'm never going to do a lawnmower blade on these CBN wheels or the real the wheels I had I had a 
one hundred and one twenty or one hundred and one fifty on and I got the machine outside still. Because I'm not grinding. I might be shaping it a little bit and then I'm gonna sharpen a little bit. Shape it, sharpen it. I'm not gonna completely tear away stuff. And that's what happens. I'm gonna call them oxide wheels, stone wheels. Um they're made man man made, they're fabricated. Um and the way it works is simple. The stone is harder than the steel. So when you put the stone to the steel, the steel has to give up and tear away. Did you catch the term tear away? Stone steel tear away. Right. That's because you're taking something it's like sliding on a concrete floor. Exactly. Now, CBN works a little bit differently. And it doesn't matter what brand or model you get. And don't worry about the curved faces or the dips of the corners and all that stuff. All right. It's like, do I get white wall tires to make my car go faster or not? All right. This is a CBN wheel. I've got a coarse one. It might be 120. I've got a fine one. It might be 180. might be a little bit higher. I can't remember the numbers. But I can tell you this. I bought these two to shape and to sharpen. Shape and sharpen. And the CBN wheel doesn't grind it away. It slices it off. Do you get that? It's like taking your roughing gouge and plowing into a nice piece of, of maple and see all the splinters coming out. Looks good on camera, but look what you did. You tore the hell out of the wood. Really. But if you took that gouge and you put it up on the edge and you did a slicing cut, what do you come up with? You can almost sand it and finish it. So you can gouge it out with a course a stone wheel, or you can slice it away with a CBN. Now they're all over the market and all kinds of prices and everything. I don't push brands or brand names for that. Um, I can tell you this is A and that's B. This came from Bob and that came from Allen. Whatever. Now that I have it in slices better. I'll get a better, sharper edge. Okay, that's CBM stone. Now, the other thing is 6 inch, 8 inch. I don't know where you want to go. If you have a 6 and you can get the wheels for it, fine. If you can't get the wheels for it and you got to go to oxide wheels, get the ones you need, the finer ones. Don't go coarse. Whatever you do, don't go coarse. And then you get that and you have a setup. Mike asked, what do I do if this thing is spinning at 3,400 RPMs? Oh, what do you do, Mike? Mine spins at 3,400 RPMs. I'm sharpening my tools as good as I've had them before. And what did I do? I adapted to a situation. I am not coarse grinding at 3,400 RPMs. I am fine grinding or shaping and sharpening at 3,400 RPMs. Right. And the difference is, right here, I know how to hold my tools and swing my tools. I'm not bearing down on them. They got, they didn't get hot. I, if you, you want to check yours, touch them to your hand one time. If they're hot, you won't do it again. If it's not hot, you'll understand. Um, if you heat the tool up, you you hurt your, your tool when you finish, and your sharp edge. Okay, don't heat it up. Light passes. This is fine. Light passes. I only go one time. Got my jig in. I'm done. I'm caught up. I rarely go over here to the course wheel. Rarely. I got it set up and everything ready to go in case I hit the chuck. Never done that. Read about it. Um, but. 3,400 doesn't matter. It's how you grind that matters. And I got to stop using the term grind. It's not grind. It's sharpen. It's how you sharpen that matters. If you can understand what's happening here and you, you're using a jig or control and you make a single pass, you're not going to heat the blade up or the edge up. You're just removing the dough and improving the edge. That's all you're doing. 
improving the dull, removing the dull and improving the edge. It's a simple pass, and that's all you need to sharpen with. Now, you can use your diamond stone later on to hone them up. Diamond stone on a round edge sometimes gets you. And don't do it on a bench right here in front of you so you can see what's happening. So you can see if it's touching the bottom bevel, top of the bevel, if it's going around the whole edge, and then feel it. Feel it. Don't do this all uh, right off the bat. If it's really sharp, FBI would look for you for removing your fingerprints. Just see if there's a bevel first. If there's a bevel, remove that bevel. Then you can gently check it. Remember, it's like touching a, the hot tool to your hand. You only do it one time. Right. I still got that mark. Hmm. All right, that's a little bit of sharpening tip. We were in the shop. You didn't catch me. Shop up playing. It's like, give me. I'm turning some things. I did about 20 pencil ink vents today with the black with the Beck ink vents, and I'm going to put uh, a little logo on them with my laser burner in a few minutes, so that I can send these off to troops for the Freedom Fence Project. I owe them something. They gave me something. I owe them something. Uh, they gave me my freedom. <laughs> that matters, folks. It ain't free. It's just freedom. All right. Well, I use my grinder, use my jigs, sharpen my tools. I got a project to work on. And you, you got to get out of here. Why? It's time to go out and start making shavings. Got to get you going every time. Every time. Oh, 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 oh. Boss may be mad at me because she pays the bills. Um, the jig, this is the Blackhawk. It's on my website. Um, and what you see is what you get. And set it up. Remember, 247. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I can't ask you to remember that. You're a wood turner. <sighs> All right. On my website, under sharing info, there's a little blur, sharing info. There's a thing where that says sharpening tips by David Ellsworth. This is from David. It's his notes. It's got his coffee spilled on it. Go to that sheet, and he will explain the 247. He'll show you what to do and what not to do when you're doing an elliptical grind. That's an elliptical grind on how to sweep it out. Because if you got a point, nope. If you got a dish, nope. If you got a nice round swoop, swoop, yeah. The pictures are there. And guess who can control that? You. That's it. Go check it all out. Why did I do this? I'm supposed to be out making shavings. Get away. Get away. Put this thing back where it goes. Always handy when I'm grinding. Always when I'm cutting. Grinding, cutting. I'll get it right. Always handy. Because <laughs> you got to sharpen when you need it. Get sharp. Bye. Can't find that damn card. It's here. Thank you.